Good afternoon ladies and gents and welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for clicking that button and joining me for today's video. Hope you're all well. So ladies and gents you join me for one more video in the gear room. If you are new to the channel and this is the first video you've stumbled across we did do a full tour of the gear room um, in the video before this so feel free to go and check that out. But today we are in the gear room for one specific reason and that is to check out two hot tent stoves from Winnerwell. Today we are going to check out my original hot tent stove, the fast fold um, hot tent stove from Winnerwell. I've had this for going on from the 10th of November um, next month. I will have been in ownership of this stove for around, well, for five years. Um, and Ashley over at Winnerwell very recently sent me across their newly revised um, hot tent fast fold plus um, titanium stove for review. So we're going to do an unboxing for the new stove then compare it directly to the uh, its predecessor. Stay tuned. Now a lot of my existing channel members will be very very familiar with this stove. Um, again I've owned my original one for many many years now and I've used it um, regular and very extensively. It still survives to this day and it's still a fantastic performing stove but again Winnerwell have newly revised the old stove and this is what we're looking at today. So this is the Winnerwell Fastfall Plus Titanium stove with nested pipe. One of the added features to this particular stove and it's the medium size the same as the one it's replacing they do do the stove in three different sizes now large medium and a very very small one which I'm open to review in the future um, well, let's crack this box open and have a look now Winnerwell introduced their first titanium hot tent folding stove all the way back in I'd say 2019 and I'm going to go out on a limb and say that they were the first company to release a um, titanium folding stove of this nature you can find many, many iterations of this now on, um, on the internet, on every site, but Winnerwell were definitely the first and the original. So on top of that, before we start, we do have a set of destructions. Um, very well documented and illustrated, very easy to follow. So there we have the illustration, illustration booklet. Right, getting into the good stuff. And there we have some very, very beefy um, titanium stakes. Um, this has another feature, um, that the other one did not have and this gives you the ability to peg this down to the ground to make it more stable in winds so we have some very very chunky nice quality titanium stakes this will be the carry case for the chimney sections we'll go over that that is an, an, another um, benefit of the stove we have this is the um, the arrestor spark arrestor mount again to allow you to make that more stable in the wind we have the carry bag you get with every Winnerwell stove, um, the folding stoves anyway, so we have a nice carry bag there, nice quality. Now the one thing that sets the stove off compared to the original is the sectional chimney pieces that this stove now, now comes with. So here we have six sections and a separate spark arrestor that just sits in there. The original stove I will show you, it came with a sheet of titanium you had to roll that yourself, that was a two person job. They've made it much easier this time. I don't have to take these apart, but as you can see, oh, we'll do it the other way. This is how these are gonna to fit together now. Much easier, and the diameter of this chimney is much wider than the original, which I'll, I'll go over and show you again. But each one of these is numbered. We have six sectional pieces again, and then the, um, the arrestor sits in there. So we have a nice carry case for that, we'll leave in there. And then we have the main stove. Now, ladies and gents, before we carry on with this tabletop presentation, I would just like to say nothing gives me more feeling of pleasure and pure elation than receiving and opening a package from Winnerwell or the Canvas Tent Shop. Um, as you know, if you've followed the channel for a while now, they've sent me quite a few um, pieces to review over to the channel now, and I have not been disappointed by one of them. So let's crack on. Now, the stoves, when you receive them and pull them out of the box, they do come stacked and they are connected by a Velcro band, which will remove this can just be laid aside. Um, but that is the one strap that will keep this piece together when not in use. So there are your two sections for the stove. We have the base and we have the cooking top or the lid. So building the first part, extremely simple. We'll just give you a look at that first. Again, very beautifully engineered, stunning piece, never disappointed. And it's a simple matter of opening this up like so. We have four sections and it is basically just a hook and loop system again with the old one although I might add 
um, very much improved over the old one again. So as you can see here, we have the hooks on the side walls and the loops on the end walls. This again is newly revised for the new stove and this already remedies one of my bugbears about the stove. So we'll go over that again very, very soon. But quick look around the stove. Here we have the front entrance, all very nice. Not too dissimilar from, well not, not dissimilar at all to the old stove. And we have the, again, keychain ring here that just opens the front grate. I like to regulate the air going into the stove. On this side, we have the old warning aluminium plate, which will walk um, under use in the back. Now the top, uh, sorry, the bottom, the legs simply just fold out like so. And that is your stove, base complete and ready to go. The titanium top simply sits on and again we have two retaining hooks and they just sit into the loops on the side of the stove. Like so. So I will point out a couple of new revisions I've noticed on this stove compared to the old stove before we directly compare them. So first of all is the butterfly valve inside here. The plate is drilled all the way through rather than just a, a solid piece and we have much more room around the outer diameter of that flue out of the damper. Again, um, we have a bolt on now as opposed to welded to the actual top base which makes it far more uh, stable in wind and should eliminate some of that bowing of the actual um, chimney ring gear when the chimney is moving about. Inside the lid, we now have new reinforcement bars. Again, this has been newly revised over the previous iteration of this newly revised stove, if that makes sense. They did have bars coming up, um, the lid like this, but now they have them going across and a couple of smaller retaining bars running down. So that should improve um, the lid being warped under use. Again, mine hasn't warped too much, which I'll show you. Um, and this does feel a lot more sturdy in the hand. Um, you can't really flex that by hand, as is. So that should fare far better under use. Now if we go to the side of the stove, one of the biggest revisions I've seen um, compared to the very, very original stove is the hook and loop system here. On the original, they were very, very short. And when you put the stove together, sometimes one might have come out and then it was too late to put anything back because you was already burning the stove. Um, these really do help to keep the stove rigid um, and in shape. So with these ones, they are much longer, to just demonstrate there. Um, these sit much further round and they have much more of a curve when they come through the loop, so less chance of them coming loose um, and you're missing one before you set fire to the stove. They've also got a nice bent out lip right on the end, so that should help again. Um, create a bit of friction just so it doesn't slide out. But a very, very nice revision, that. I do like that. The legs on the newly revised stove are much longer than the original. I mean, you have less chance of actually cooking the ground under you, but it gives you more space in case you want to warm a couple of logs up before putting them in the fire. And we also have two eyelets here, and they are designed for these meaty pegs. So when the stove is in use, you can slide these in and into the ground, and that will secure it, making it far more stable. If you remember the great chimney bending of my original store from a couple of years ago, um, we did camp in Edale on a campsite. Um, a gust of wind snatched my pipe, my foil tin pipe, folded that in half and inside the tent I was frying hot eggs um, and bacon and it kind of just ripped that stove all over the bleeding tent. So with these, that's going to make it far more secure much safer. Now again the chimney sections are numbered uh, so you can't fluff that and it's very easy assembly. We have the spark arrestor on the top and each one of the chimney pieces are crimped on the ends uh, to easily slide into the next adjacent pipe. Another major plus with this newly revised stove is again the butterfly damper inside the flue there. So on the original stove it was a singular piece of titanium we had no drilled holes and the diameter of that um, butterfly valve itself came very close to the inner diameter of the chimney. Um, so airflow could have been a problem if you didn't already have a really deep bed of coals before going to bed at night and putting the stove down to slumber mode, which is this mode, it would just snuff the fire out. Also with the creosote building up in the chimney, um, that can cause problems like nasty carbon monoxide. 
Um, it was never an issue for me because I did always leave it slightly open, a quarter turn, uh, just to ensure the stove could breathe and um, keep them coals alive. On the newly revised damper on the new stove, you can see there we've got plenty of airflow around the damper first and then we have the drilled sections inside. So that is never going to be an issue. Fantastic. Now, as you can imagine, the biggest selling point of this kind of stove is one, ease of portability, the extreme lightweight nature of the stove, and three, ease of use. Now, unfortunately, this is where the very first original stove bests the newly revised stove. That is because the old stove weighed in at 1.98 kilo, the new stove weighs in at 2.8. Now, in my honest opinion, I do much prefer the nesting pipe system um, over the titanium sheet you've got to faff about with and you have a good chance of cocking up in the rolling process. This one is going to add uh, structural rigidity to the pipe and less chance of it being folded over in a wind. Um, and this eliminates the titanium rings that kept the uh, folding pipe together. And they, after use on my, in my experience, just slid down the pipe right to the bottom of the base of the stove. So they did nothing at all. But even coming in at 2.8 kilo or 6.1 pounds, this is absolutely no weight at all when you compare it to something like a Frontier stove or a stainless steel stove of comparable size. Now, just before we compare the newly revised stove with the original, let me just demonstrate to you the, how the chimney system works on this stove. Now again, this is a far superior chimney system when compared to the old stove, but there is one caveat, which we'll go over now. So obviously with the old stove, that was a full section of pipe that you rolled up and put on there. So um, you needed to use the full pipe to put the spark arrestor on the top anyway. With traditional um, sectional piece stoves, like the Frontier stove and things like that, when you are putting the chimney sections on, if you only want to use so many sections and then put your spark arrestor on, it allows you to do that. With this being a stacked um, chimney system, it does get narrower to the top, so you can't just use, say, three pieces and then put your spark arrestor on top. You are, again, going to have to use the full chimney. So, very easily put on the stove. So you start with section one. That just slots in, very nice. You do get a nice ridge as well, where it's crimped, to ensure it securely fits into the next section. And then it's just a matter of sliding them over each other. Like so. And it actually fits further over the crimped section than you'd think. So you're getting a good two inches there. Um, sitting into the next adjacent, where's my number? There's my number. Like so. So we're at the crimp there now. And it does slide over considerably more. That should aid again in stability in the wind. Um, I have just put the... There we go. I have found it um, kind of a struggle to pull... Oh, sorry, to pull um, the spark arrestor out if you push that in too far. So I'd just lightly place that in, to be honest. And we have section five. I haven't got room for the spark arrestor in here, but you get the idea. And there we have it, ladies and gents. So now you get a good idea of how these chimney sections fit together. And as you can see, um, even with that larger diameter pipe there, you've got plenty of surface here for cooking and boiling. And again, you've got some really nice thick girth here now. Really nice thick pipe. Um, and that should really improve airflow to no end. Very, very sexy. Oh, pole dance, anyone? No? Maybe another time. Right, let's compare it to the original stove. So here on the tabletop, we have the two respective stoves respectively, side by side. So what we'll do first is, we'll uh, go over pack dimensions. First for the original. So we have a length of 15 inch by, let's push that down, 12 inch, and a depth actually of four inches. On the new stove, we have a pack dimension of 17 and a half inch by, 12 inches again and we have a depth on that of three inches i will say both bags are very generous in volume and easily accommodate your stove and any other bits you might want to keep inside like heat mats construction of the bags are very very similar very very nice stitching and each have ykk zippers um, i have never had this snag on me or ruin on me in all of its five years of use 
um, so really reliable and as you can see um, still in good condition. Now I do sometimes see comments regarding the performance and wear of these stoves after extended use and I'm glad to report that this stove is still 100% fully functional um, after again five years of regular and extensive use. Both of these stoves share the same commonality in which you can use the base as a fire pit um, which is a fantastic feature of this stove and one I use regular so I'm glad to see that hasn't been emitted in the newly, newly revised stove. You might be able to see there if the camera's picking it up that each stove is slightly different in dimensions so with the old stove we had a length on the cooking top of 15 inches and a width of 9 inches. On the new one we have a length of 15 inches and a width of 8. So you have lost some cooking real estate there. But again this is far more rigid than the older stove which has developed some warping over the years. Here you can see the newly implemented design regarding the butterfly valve in the flue damper there. So again on the old one we have a solid piece of titanium, not much airflow around there um, and on the new one we have that drill plate and plenty of airflow around there. So on the newly revised model you'll see here we have the horizontal strengthening bars here and we also have two small vertical bars. On the old model all we had was two small vertical bars which did create um, quite a bit of flex although again um, the amount of warping that this is sustained doesn't take away from the performance of the stove and it still boils and fries quite readily. But this one is much more rigid. Whether the camera's picking it up there, the rippling on the top of the stove. It's probably a better shot. So if we check out the fronts of the stoves now, and mainly the doors, you can see there we do have a slightly larger um, door on the original stove of five and three quarter inch by eight inch on the newly revised medium stove and this is still the medium stove we have five and a quarter by six and a half so we do have a smaller port for feeding your fuel in there and if we open both of these up so the inner door we have four and a half by five and a half and on the older one we have five by seven and a quarter so we do have a smaller port for feeding fuel in but again the minimized dimensions on the stove are done to aid in um, warping to reduce the amount of warping with the stove again this is still an absolutely fantastic stove does its job but this is going to fare much better regarding airflow and warping over time I'm guessing. We have the same rings on the front as you can see here we do have some slight bowing out of the door and um, that's happened over many years of use again. So ladies and gents if I can just divert your attention to the sides of the boxes here and you're looking at these hooks you'll see just how long they are on this one and how short they are on the old one. There you go. So the longer hooks have got far more purchase in the loops uh, holding that box together more securely. And the older ones um, as long as you keep an eye on them and you make sure they are housed, they shouldn't cause an issue. But again, in the past, using that one, um, sometimes they did come loose as I was folding the legs out on the box or something, and then it's too late by the time you've uh, got a fire in there. So, much more secure on the new, new build. On the side of the boxes, you'll find the same aluminium warning plate. Um, these do warp with time, as you can tell on this one, it's severely warped. Um, as well as the side of the actual box as well. This has suffered the worst and again on this side. This does warp extensively, but again, when it's built into the box and you've got the fire in there and you've got the chimney going, um, it still functions as normal. So as you can see with the legs folded out on both stoves, the new stove does stand slightly higher. So we'll measure that now. So we have a grand height of 11 inches on the old stove. And on the new stove, we have a height of 13 inches. So it gives you that extra two inches clearance underneath the stove because um, on more than one occasion I did scorch the grass when I was camping on grass um, and even with a heat mat under that it does get very very warm. With the benefit of this having that extra height you can store wet legs under there as well you know to warm them up before you put them in and um, you could do with that but you're only getting one layer there when possibly two there. Also on the legs you'll notice on the old stove there is no hook for putting your peg through to secure that to the ground and on the new one we have that um, implemented eye hole for the meaty pegs supplied with this stove. 
So now we have the chimneys for both stoves and on this one it is full of creosote so I'm going to be very careful because I'm all over my um, rug again. So here you get a small section for putting on top of the pipe for your spark arrestor. Does a good job, never had an issue with that clogging up. Um, and there you get your one piece titanium um, chimney pipe. I did this, I managed to roll this on my own the first time with um, probably one or two creases um, and I did that by rolling it from a corner first into a big cone and then um, shape it round into a pipe and then put the um, clips on the, the rings that you get to hold this pipe together. Now over the years I'd say probably around 18 months in um, the rings that do come with the pipe and you get a number of these just to slide over to keep it in the pipe shape um, these just failed I'm going to say failed because all they did when the when the chimney got hot they just slid right down to the base of the stove um, leaving that pipe leaving the only thing holding the pipe together was the spark arrestor at the top so I've had to drastically um, modify these over the years and all I've done is crimped right in the middle to pull that ring together and these now stay on the pipe but again when this stove came to the market this was an absolutely innovation it was the first of its kind and things have only got better as the stove has progressed um, so you've already got a fantastic stove here they still sell this model but things have just improved on this side as well again on this side you have the sectional pieces here each one's numbered um, so there's no you can't faff that simple um, numbers are big enough you can see where they are and you just stack it number by number put your spark arrestor on the top now ladies and gents let's talk price so when I first picked up my Winnerwell titanium hot tent stove nearly five years ago now this was retailing on the Winnerwell website for uh, just over £500 UK and at the time you've got to remember this was an innovation in hot tent camping there was nothing else like it on the market so the £500 that this commanded I think was fair play I paid that and I haven't, I've had no grumbles over the years paying that amount of money for the stove. This stove currently retails for £349 on the Winnerwell website. To compare this to something of similar dimensions, here we have the Tomount stainless steel hot tent stove. I'm going to call this the Amazon stove because these are readily found on Amazon. And I'm going to say this is um, one of the probably knockoff Chinese stoves. Um, we do have a couple of nice features like the fold out wire grates. We also have a few quality control cutbacks on this stove, <laughs> namely being the plate. That isn't too dissimilar from something you find on the Frontier stove, where you can cook directly over the flames. Um, it's a nice addition to the stove. Only thing is you're given this flimsy wire bar to remove and replace this. And the spike on the end, I think, is designed to put through the hole to lift that off. And then to replace that, um, it is a bit of a fiddle. And there's no really deep recess that that plate sits in, so it does just slide about the stove. And that is directly in the middle of your cooking surface there. And bearing in mind, this is going to be absolutely mad hot um, when you're using this. Also, we have no damper on the back of the chimney, and we have a diameter. If I just find my tape measure, a diameter of the chimney is two and a half inch. So that is even smaller than the winner well um, so you may struggle with that we have the obviously air regulator on the front the like the ammo stove can style but no damper on the back so you're relying on that on the front uh, nice fold out legs nice um, nice fuel port there to feed in and all your chimney pieces fit inside this retails for £169 currently on Amazon, but it also weighs 6.6 .6 kilograms when compared to this at 1.8. Um, it's not something you want to be lugging about, and this is going to be resorted to car camping, definitely. Moving on to the newly revised Winnerwell Fast Fold Titanium Hot Tent Stove that replaces this one here. This currently retails at £529 on the Winnerwell website. Now I know I'm going to get a few negative comments regarding this stove in the comments section and the main one will be the price. Um, second will be I've not paid that for it and it's been sent to me for review. Um, that's true I've not paid the money for this one but I did pay over £500 for this one out of my own cash and I have no gripes about doing so. I think these stoves are definitely worth the money. Winnerwell are the leading uh, manufacturers in folding hot tent stoves so 
when you're buying one of these you're probably buying it for life this is still going strong after five years i have no doubts in my mind this is going to do the same plus and it is the plus stove funnily enough <laughs> with the improvements this one's had over its predecessor this has just made it an even better stove in my opinion um, and I cannot wait to get out and use this. Is this stove worth £529 of your hard-earned money in 2024? If you're looking for a serious bit of kit, lightweight, extremely portable, uh, and your budget allows, I would say 100% um, this is worth your money. If your budget won't stretch that far, but you want the majority of features that this stove offers, then I can highly recommend the original, which is still for sale on the Winner World website, and this one comes in at £349. I'm going to wrap the video up there ladies and gents, the next time you see this stove it will be out and it will be getting its first burning, hopefully on a camp in a tent. So stay tuned to the channel for that and consider subscribing if you've enjoyed this video, um, it helps me out and it costs you absolutely nothing. Just before I go, if you're looking for an extremely lightweight set of cutlery for your camping kit, let me show you these. Now when Ashley sends me a review piece over, he sometimes throws an extra piece in, he's just that kind of bonus feature type of guy. On this occasion he has thrown me an extremely lightweight set of titanium cutlery so there's the number if you want to check them out. I think these, re these retail for about £10 on the site. And we'll set these out and I've been looking for something very very similar to go in my small brew kit. So there we have it, full titanium construction and these simply fold out like so. And these are going to be absolutely fantastic these will go nicely with the splitter i could probably keep them in there with that actually so there we go 10 pounds a nice fork and spoon set from winnowell check it out until the next one you stay safe and as always stay crafty